Hi, everybody. My name's Jamar. Why don't we each go around and introduce ourselves? <laughs> <laughs> and all 1,500 people online. That's right. That's right. <laughs> Uh, shout out to you coming out on a random Wednesday morning to hear about a light and fuzzy topic like Christian nationalism. Um, it can be heavy. It can cause us to go like this and frown. But being together and learning and trying to do something about it makes me feel like smiling. So we're going to go on a journey. It's going to be okay. We're going to be dealing with some hard facts, but we'll do it together. How's that? All right. So... With that preamble, let me make this statement. White Christian nationalism is the greatest threat to democracy and the witness of the church in the United States today. White Christian nationalism is the greatest threat to democracy and the witness of the church in the United States today. These data back it up. I define Christian nationalism as an ethno-cultural ideology that uses Christian symbolism to create a permission structure for the acquisition of political power and social control. An ethno-cultural ideology that uses Christian symbolism to create a permission structure for the acquisition of political power and social control. Lots of different definitions out there many of them very good. That's just how I think of it. As we look at these most recent findings, one particular aspect stood out to me as a historian of race and religion, and it was this part. It says, there are minimal differences in adherence to Christian nationalism beliefs by race. Minimal differences. Rates of support for Christian nationalism are roughly the same among white Americans, about 30% lean, and black Americans, about 30% lean toward Christian nationalism. And I said, huh, that's interesting. Given the racial implications and ramifications of Christian nationalism, how could it be that there are minimal differences by race. And then I thought about it. Two things came up. One, there has always been some cooperation of the oppressed with the oppressor. This is how you get the, the, the trope of the Uncle Tom, right? It's the idea that you betray your own community and take sides with the dominant power. So that's always the case in, in whatever kind of oppression you're dealing with. But secondly, black Americans as a group are a highly religious group. On average, most Americans believe in God or a higher power. According to a Pew Research study in 2021, 97% of black Americans believe in God or a higher power. And the vast majority of those folks are Christian, Protestant, at that. So it wouldn't surprise us that this language of God and country resonates with black people. The difference is, what do we mean? What do we mean by those words? I contrast white Christian nationalism with black Christian patriotism, nationalism and patriotism. Let me give you one example. Last night, we heard the State of the Union, and if you had your caffeine going, you heard the response to the State of the Union from Sarah Huckabee Sanders, the new governor of Arkansas. She ran against Chris Jones, a black man with a PhD from MIT, what's so interesting about those two figures is that they both ran what I call faith-forward campaigns. They foregrounded their Christian faith. They're both children of preachers. They both adhere to Christianity. Chris Jones is a minister. And yet what they meant when they looked at the intersection between faith and politics was very different. 
just broadly speaking, when you talk about white Christian nationalism, it tends toward a rigid, narrow, authoritarian kind of politics. When you're talking about black Christian patriotism, it tends toward an expansive, flexible, inclusive kind of politics. And so it's not just the words people use, it's the ramifications of what they mean by those words. Now, you've heard me say a couple of times white Christian nationalism. I think Christian nationalism is a perfectly appropriate term. It takes less time to say. <laughs> but I don't want us to forget the white in the white Christian nationalism part. That is to say, we cannot overlook the racial dimensions of Christian nationalism. Dr. Jones pointed some of that out. I'll just remind us that as we see resurgence of what we're now calling white Christian nationalism, that tends to happen around times when black rights are expanding. So we can look at sort of the most notorious group that represents white Christian nationalism. And if you never thought of them in these terms, I think it'll be appropriate. The Ku Klux Klan first arose in the 1860s. What happened then? Emancipation after the Civil War. They got real active again in the 1950s and 60s. What was going on then? A civil rights movement where black people were pushing for more civil rights. But perhaps the most widespread and virulent form happened in the Jim Crow era. What was going on then? Coincided in 1915 with this film, The Birth of a Nation, which mythologized and romanticized the founding of the Klan and of a white, Christian, mainly Protestant America. So, in conclusion, white Christian nationalism is not only the greatest threat to democracy and the witness of the church in the United States today, to put a finer point on it, White Christian nationalism is the greatest threat to a multiracial, inclusive democracy and a diverse church in the United States today. Thank you.